welcome to the Awaken, Heal, and Thrive podcast. This episode is called Awaken to Inner Peace in the Midst of Chaos with Radhavi. I'm Benjamin Bernstein, and this episode has two sponsors. One is my online membership called Awakening Plus, and the other is my book, the number one Amazon bestseller called Instant Divine Assistance, your complete guide to fast and easy spiritual awakening, healing, and more. Just go to Amazon and search for Instant Divine Assistance or click the link in the show notes. I publish both audio and video versions of Awaken, Heal, and Thrive, so take your pick. The video versions are on my YouTube channel called Benjamin Bernstein Podcasts. I drop new episodes of this podcast twice a month. Be sure to subscribe to Awaken, Heal, and Thrive wherever you get it. And if you haven't already, be sure to click the link in the show notes for a free chance to win a full year of my Awakening Plus online membership. I announce a new winner every month. Radhavi, co-author of a highly rated number one Amazon bestseller, is this episode's special guest. She and her husband, Doug DiCarlo, co-wrote and recently published The Divine Sparks Speak, Awaken to Inner Peace in the Midst of Chaos, Free Yourself from Human Conditioning. In this episode, Radhavi, an inner peace guide and spirit-based indigenous healer for over 30 years, discusses key themes from their new book, including why you already are the peace and happiness you seek, how gaining awareness of your divinity can free you from traumas, wounds, and conditioning, how 12 freedom explorations could spark the awakening that transforms your life, how to free yourself from your socially imposed biographical and biological identity, and much more. Get ready to drink from Radhavi's deep well of wisdom and bask in her radiant divine energy. Radhavi, welcome to Awaken, Heal, and Thrive. Oh, I'm so happy to be here with you, Benjamin. We have we have had our long journeys together in our mm-hmm. own way, and it's so beautiful that we have arrived at a place of really a, an expansive service to humanity in the way in which we do it. Mm. And even you say that, I'm just feeling these waves of amazing energy flowing over me. So if you... Uh, viewer, listener, if you're at all sensitive, notice this energy. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Radhavi. So obviously you and I have known each other a long time. We've done a lot of spiritual work together over the years. But that's that's not why I'm having you on. I'm having you on here because you've published this amazing book. And I think it will help a lot of people to experience your offerings. It's your first book. And I understand it was co-authored with your partner, Doug. It was very much a collaborative effort, was it not? Oh, believe me. Um, it 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 was a, a divine acquisition. The divine, I mean, really, I, I was told that too, so I won't go into that detail yet. We came together, I was told, for the book. So it's rather um, interesting, you know, so we have to look at this. Why is this? We had to be put together for this book. What is so important about the book? So that's the question. Wow. Well, I'm sure we'll get into the answer to that as we go here. Yeah. Um, to to help people, I, I know in your book, you you spent a little time talking about some of your background. Mm-hmm. Um, you call yourself an indigenous healer. That's part mm-hmm. of what you do, mm-hmm. um, as well as being the inner peace guide. So uh, I'm sure it would be a, a fun thing. Well, actually, uh, let's get to that a sec. But if you would just give people a quick sense of what's what's the book about, in a nutshell, what what would people expect if they were interested in your book? What would you do for them? Okay, so I'm going to go from the top to say that when I was seven years old, my soul guided me to write a book. And I never forgot, there's a picture in my mind where I took this simple white paper and wrote one sentence. And I wrapped it up, pulled the drawer out, and hid it behind the drawer so nobody would ever see it. Hmm. I did not tell anybody that I wrote that because I was a very um, internal, a very, very deep internal person. So I, I would think a lot, but I think I was getting information a lot without me in my young age knew that I was getting all those information. Hmm. So... Many years later, when I have gone through my hard knocks, 
through the experiences of life, I have come to this place now where I realize that all of those experiences that I had was agreements that my soul had to bring me here to get my last agreement, as they tell, told me, to serve humanity in the way in which this book is here. The rest before that was to serve me to open and to gain the understanding and wisdom of of, of the conditioned self, of the program self that we all struggle through. Here in this book is about the messages that my soul had agreed to receive from the essence of our soul. And I, I want to let the listeners know that as I'm speaking about this, I'm the one who got the messages. I want you to know that we all have a divinity, a divine spark in each one of us. We come from the one source. And I would say we are from the one flame of the divine. And my personal word for that is God. Mm. Source, divine, whatever you want to call it. And so this book is really talking to everyone. All of us have gone through conditioning. All of us have been trapped into a program that I know from my own experience it was difficult. And some of us, it's difficult to get out of. And we need someone who has the love and compassion to support us and hold our hands because we remember. We know what it's like. And, and so it's about learning, growing, and evolving, all of us. So so the book is not about me. The book is for humanity who have gone through the experiences. We all have gone through our own different experiences. And to know in the book that you can get out of it. That's the thing. It's not about telling you something you already know and said, it's true, I got it. No. It's about reminding you what has happened in, in, in your lives and to tell you there's a remedy. You have always been the essence, the essence of your soul. This is the only thing that came into this body is your soul. And you're here to learn, grow, and evolve. And here it is, this book. Is giving you the messages of your divine spark. And, you know, I had a, a very deep meditation not too long ago. And I was just, I understand I'm humbled by getting the message, but the, the, the recognition for my higher self to say that we are sacred being. You know, people say we are, we are more magnificent. I want to say that we can be magnificent in many ways. But believe me, when we are sacred, to me, it comes from deep within. Me. And that's what, that's what I felt from my higher self. We are sacred beings. And in that meditation, I saw myself put, putting my hand on the book and really felt the messages are sacred and so are all humanity. You are sacred. Don't let anything ever deter you from that. Hmm. You know, I'm having to balance here. Your, your, the divine energy coming through you is so potent. I'm having to just not get totally overwhelmed by that and just forget about it's, your words. <laughs> it, it's okay. It's so beautiful. And you know what it is, Benjamin? When we are passionate and we are we are holding the torch of our agreement, I, I, there's nothing that can <laughs> move me away from this. Peace and my my um, my teachers. I call them 
They said, this, this is my last agreement. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean I'm going to die tomorrow. It means I have reached the place where now I'm not serving me through my own healing experiences or different experiences to gain more wisdom. I'm now here to serve the divine sparks in all humanity. Speaking of the divine sparks, um, some people wonder what what you put the divine sparks right at the top of your title. What are the divine sparks exactly? Well, the divine sparks are the essence of our soul. I didn't know that. They taught me because when when I had my first um, vision, um, had my vision, and they told me because you know I work, I served clients for over thirty years healing their wounded inner child. That was one layer. But when I think my soul said, okay, now you you have um you have done that. You've you have become an an um, authority on that. Now we're going to give you the rest. And the rest was while I was healing or helping my clients to unveil those those aspects of themselves that have been um, cut off from them, and we go find them and do soul retrieval. It was the divine self, this innocence that I was working with, because I could hear them. They would speak to me, and now I've reached here, and I would smile and said, "How come nobody told me? I had to learn." I had to go through my own experience to learn, as we all do. That was the beginning of my agreement to open my divine spark and to really express myself through that with, for human being. And that's what the divine spark is. They told me we are not wounded children, we are divine sparks. Mm. Essence of also and mm. they also told me that we live in the divine heart mm. so divine spark is love and peace the light light of awareness is the spark and, and um we we don't realize that we are already at peace only if we can unveil all those difficulties and all those problems and all those programs. I've done it. And I know I you can. I know we all can. It's so beautiful to know that I hold that hand for humanity. Mm. Yes. Wow. And and yeah. And now when I see the homeless, like yesterday I was in us, I always have money to give them because I said, Douglas, they are my brother. They are my family. Hmm. And, the, and the one that I saw, I'm looking for my money. I had it. I stood and chatted with him a while and he said, I remember you. I said, yes. So tell me a little bit more about you. I wanted to know a little bit more about him. So love and compassion, when we get when we live from the essence of our soul, this spark, this spark, this light, this light of the divine, that's our true essence. Hmm. Yeah. Based on what you're saying and how I feel, it feels like you're very much identified much more as that spark than as the human called Radhavi. Is that correct? Yes. They even talked with me. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just, I was curious. Um, do you perceive Radhavi as like the instrument that the spark is using? Is Radhavi so merged with the divine spark? There's no difference anymore. Can you verbalize uh, what that experience is like with your humanity contrasted and compared to the, the spark? That's a good question. No, I remembered from a very heightened compassion, I was listening to an awakened teacher and I really touched into that frequency. And I remembered 
when I fell into the fetus, I was sobbing and sobbing. That's my soul came into the fetus and I was, I felt trapped because, mm. you know, you, you, when you are a soul, you have a light, you are, you, you, there's no, no, no material, no physical form there. I felt trapped and in that moment I knew that I had to be there and I had to learn to be there. So the, the answer to that is, I, I refer to my body as a sacred temple. And it is through this body that is very important for all of us to know that it's we are guided and, and we have the motions of hugging. We have the motion of bringing that energy through our being. So when I am open to that spark, like any, everyone is, you will find that your compassion and love emanates through your physical expression, through your sacred temple. And that's how I see it. Mm, thank you. You've done thousands of healing sessions. It sounds like inner child work has been very central to what you do. Um, just give us a sense of what you've done. And are, are, you, are you still doing a lot of that work? Or are you transitioning away from one-on-one -on -one client work now what's your what have you been doing and what does the okay. future of your individual work look like good question in the past i would always look at they come to me about their pain what they're going on what's this happening with them in their lives and i would make them be a better person but then when i've opened up to the divine spark and all of that I'm not. My intention is not to make anyone a better person. I want to uncover and release and unveil all that they have identified with as a person, as a biographical self. I want them to open up to the essence of their being. So that's a different thing that I'm, mm. that I'm called to do. That you want to help them awaken is what it sounds like. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And when you get lived there, you're in compassion and you're in love, and you don't see the difference between you and anybody else. Mm, nice. So I'm curious. Um, in the book, you know, which I've read and loved, my impression of it after reading it was it's just lots of pointers back to your divinity. I mean, it's like you just it's like you every angle possible and pointing you back to your divine, your divine, your divine, and just in very creative ways, you know, making that pointing back just very consistently throughout the book. In addition, there's the 12 processes where a person can do the process. And these also have the function of, of pointing you back to your own divinity. You know, I've read a lot of spiritual books and some are very yang. You do this high effort, strenuous stuff to get there. Uh, your book, feels very yin to me it's more like just yeah you know, instead of a a doing book yours feels even though there's those 12 exercises it feels much more like a being book i'm wrong but the impression i get is you're you're saying hey you're already that you are the divine you are the divine spark you are pure consciousness i'm just trying to get you to remember that and once you remember that you know that's just uh, the I big know. breakthrough maybe this book is designed to get you to. Is that is that a correct assessment of your You are absolutely correct. And and the thing is to when we were writing this book together, my beloved husband, Doug, every morning we have a certain time that we meet. And before we start to express about the book, we pray. So there was a sacredness and we had such a respect for each other in the differences that we had about what to write. But we both knew we wanted that book to be very simple. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to talk about gurus. We didn't want to talk about anybody else's, you know, made, you know, we made reference to a few people. But I wanted, we, I wanted that to be to human beings, 
to the biographical self to know that you're not that. Here is what you are. So one of the things that they they told me, I don't know, you know, the, the divine spark said, oh, I don't know, you you turn away from from me. You turn away from me. So my spark is talking to me. But it had a great effect on something like that, on how you released your emotions and healing. And and so they were explaining how well to me, but I think it's to other human beings too. You have turned away from me, but you open to your emotions and open to what it is that has wrapped me, my spark, into this place of living as a biographical self. And because that's what they said to me. And now here you are, and they were greeting me in that way. Told me what I did, told me why it happened, and now they have they're greeting me and began to give me a lot of the messages. Hmm. I want to say to for me these messages are very yearning. And I don't repeat them. I don't have to look in the book to read one because there is a frequency about the messages and I know they are more of a higher dimension and so I will only pick up the book to read one I, I, I won't repeat it because I realize that there is a frequency there that I need to stay intact with that's mm -hmm. how it comes over to me Sacred, sacred messages. Hmm. Almost sounds like you're using your own book, kind of like the I Ching. You pick it up and you get the thing you need for that moment. Right, and you know we do, um, Benjamin. We do that. We have one on the coffee table, and there are times when we I just pick it up, and Douglas is there, and I read it to Douglas, or something we read together, because sometimes. We we need to remember, we're reminding ourselves about all of this all of the time. So we want to live in it. Hmm. We live through the book. Beautiful. Now, in the subtitle of your book, you say, Awaken to Inner Peace in the Midst of Chaos. So that might be worth talking about a little bit because a lot of people seem to feel, oh my God, we're living in such chaotic times. How could I ever <laughs> be peaceful with all this craziness in the world? Do you want to uh, address that? Sure. I'm going to use myself as a reference because that, that statement, we tried so many times to find the right thing to put on the cover. And we came to that finally after struggling for quite a, quite a while. And I looked at it and I thought, everything on this book cover expresses me. So I'm going to use myself and it is when you start to go inside. Once you get caught into looking at the world out there of what's going on, oh my God, I mean it's we don't have to we don't have to look anymore. We know it's amazing, it's chaotic. And there's a lot of struggle. And so there's a lot of fear a lot of doubts, and a lot of people are fearful and resistant, resist to open up and let go. It's an inside job. Once you start to look inside of you, that's when the magic starts. That's when you start to hear the little whisper at times, or you go into meditation, or you're going to stillness. And you, you open your heart to feel, who am I? Why am I here? Because I know as children, all of us did that. Why am I here? I did that over and over at five years old. None of us ever come without that divine state. And once you start to meditate, to look at that, or find someone, something would be intuitively guiding you to find someone who could support you to move through that struggle. You have to be ready. 
you have to let go of resistance. And the magic happens there. You will be guided where to go, what to do, and how passionate you are to find the peace within you. That is it. It seems like a struggle, but it seems it's a passion desire to do. And many of us, you know, like Benjamin, will say awakening in whole different ways. And we all have different ways for experiencing awakening. So it's awakening to inner peace. Mm. When you, to inner peace. And you'll see all of things going on. I, I'll use this metaphor. Just imagine that there's a big window screen clean. And you, your divine self, want you to come in and your divine self, your spot, is standing in a really safe place. And outside, all this chaos is happening. All this rain or thunder, for instance, rain and, and you feel so totally safe inside, untouched. Because you're behind that screen. And there's a sense of gratitude and safety away from the chaos or whatever the disruption is going on. So you basically, you, you're aware of the chaos, but because of your heightened consciousness, it's like it uh, can't actually touch your, your no, central consciousness. No, no. In my way, I look at that as um, identification. You no longer identify with those things. Mm. So in my experience, I'm saying, okay, I am letting go my human identification more and more when I hear something and I'm not offended. It's what's happening. And we all have our own different path and journey to go to get to that place of, of my, my guides refer to, the path of truth. Mm. We're on a soul's journey. And we get caught into certain situations because we need to learn and grow and evolve through that. But we get to a place when we feel attracted to someone who can help us. It doesn't matter what you, your ego is not telling you you're drawn. You're drawn to something and your mind does not know why. And that is when you know you're on part of truth. Mm. You're going somewhere to help you to evolve through these situations that is happening on the planet. Hmm. So that would involve synchronicity and really hearing and following the inner guidance. Yeah. Yes. Um, any, uh, there may be some people watching or listening who, who really don't understand how to really tune into that. Is there a, a simple piece of advice you give them on how to hear that inner guidance or recognize that synchronicity more easily? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to say, you know, if, if somebody may say, okay, that's good enough for you to say that, but I want to know who I am. Yeah, you know, you're talking, and I want to know who I am. So consider that something really has disturbed you, really is bothering you, and you feel you're trapped in it. As we have been talking about the divine spark, just imagine yourself opening to that light within you. You don't have to know where it is, but just feel it, the presence of that light, and take a full deep breath. Just allow the light to come in. And you feel there's a difference when you're in that light. And so something happened, let's say you were much younger and the same thing was happening, a disturbance, a different disturbance. 
and you open to that light, and when you were born, you didn't know, didn't have a language. The only thing when you cry is because there's a sensation. You were innocent. You were this light that came and there was nothing else. What had happened there is that all those experiences you had had come and gone, the new ones. But that light that you opened to has never changed. That is the light that you are. Hmm. So it's not what I'm telling you, what you can experience for yourself. Because we're all energy beings. That light is always constant, as constant as when that you were born and didn't have a language. You're in innocent. Your divine spark, the essence, is your innocence. It's innocence, meaning... I was in a restaurant one day and there was a pregnant woman who came in with her little son and happened to sit beside me. And, um, and I always love to talk to these little children because they are so innocent. And I was chatting with him and then he said, you know, he's three years old and then he told me he has a brother. And his mother said, he's talking about the dog. The dog is his brother. Hmm. That's the innocence we all have. We don't see anything different from us. Hmm. The tree has that energy of such a spark. It's not different from us. It looks different. You know, I, like Benjamin and I are sitting here together. We look different. He's a male, I'm a female. To take that a look. We look different. But oh my gosh. We are the essence of that divine light. And I know that it's probably hard for some of you to say, I can't get over that person because they hurt me so much. I cannot get over it. I can forgive them, but I can't forget, which is a nonsense. If you forget, you haven't forgiven. But I'd like to really take you to your heart space. Don't listen from your mind, right? No. That person who hurt you was identified through his program, through his conditioning. Just like you, who can't let go of the blame. Because so, if you were living, I'm not, I'm not pointing at you, talking bad to you. I just wanted you to understand the pain you are carrying is the pain of humanity's stuff because all of us have felt at some times that we were never acknowledged. And when that person hurt you, so many times it's gone back to that place where you felt you lacked that connection mm -hmm. with people because human beings we need connection. It's very important. So in our, in our state of what it is that we're holding on, the imp our imprints are causing us to not able to forgive that person because we're carrying an imprint and that person is too. And we're all looking for the same thing. We're all trying to find that source within us. That's what happened 
I'll give you an experience as what happened with my brother and I. I was moving to North Carolina and he was in a nursing home and I understand he wasn't doing well. So I thought I need to go see him before he passes. Or in, I, may, I may never see him again before he passes. And when I stood at the door, this is a brother who had affected me in many ways, many ways. It hurt me. And I looked at him in his bed. I didn't see the person who had affected me. There was a veil that fell out that was not on him. I saw his innocence. Hmm. I tell you, that was an amazing experience for me. I saw his innocence and I went up to the bed, sat on a chair and held his hand. Because what happened, that reflection of his innocence brought my spark out to, and I, I did something I've never ever done before. I held his hand and I looked at him and I said, I love you so much. Mm. When I said I've never done that before, not with that hard space, that there was nobody there except his essence and mine. Mm. And it was the most beautiful moment. Mm. So pe people say that you don't see the world as it is, you see the world as you are. Absolutely. Because your consciousness filters everything, and that uh, seems clear to me that you had achieved such a deep awakening at that point that as primarily identifying with your own divine spark, your own divinity, that's what you naturally perceived in him more than ex the human part. Is that correct? Ex ex excellent, Benjamin. It's true. And he was unveiled because he was in the place of passing. Mm. I mean, in weeks because when I moved, I moved in November, and he passed mm, early January. Mm -hmm. So he was on his way. And so he, many people, I think, said when people are ready to die, something starts to fall off. They start to look different or they act differently and mm -hmm. so on. It, it was one of the most special moment that, I, that I've had. And as you said, Benjamin, you see the world how you are. So consider that when you decided to say, I'm letting go of resistance, I'm going to go find and live my divine self, my my spot, because it's you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to take a plane to go find it. It's right here. Mm. And that fear doubt and resistance falls away and you know you listen you know, um, I offer on, on my website I offer one of the, the, the freedom exploration you can sign up and listen to that hmm. when you buy the book you have all 12 you know and in the book you can it's right there to click to click on my website for my book and you listen. You have so many opportunities to practice with those freedom exploration to remind you what you are. It's, 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 it's written for you to, to come to that place of inner peace. Mm. Now, another of the themes of the book is to free yourself from your traumas, wounds, and conditioning. And obviously most of what we've been talking about is the just the you're identifying with love and light part. Some people might wonder, oh, this sounds a lot like spiritual bypass. When are we going to get down to the shadow work, right? So That's right. That's you, right. <laughs> you do go into the shadow work part quite a bit in the book. You don't bypass that at all. What would you no. say in a nutshell is your message about how to get that healing? Yeah, body? how to get out of that. Because, you know, I think in the book, I talked about my experience too. Many, many years ago when I had a channeled teacher, she was a full body channel and we adored her. We got so many um, teachings 
that even is it's right now, right now it's here, what's happening. And mm -hmm. having looked back from that experience that I had, that journey, you know, I, I stepped away when she left because I felt that we were taking a spiritual bypass. Oh, we were so great. We There's nobody like us. We were just so special. We are from 50,000 years from the future. We were all of them, you know. <laughs> mm. I just laugh. It's so funny. Mm. And, we, and the whole thing is, we believed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and finally, one day, I, I looked... And I recognized what was happening, and I stepped away. Mm. And that's when I could really see what a spiritual person do. And so I walked away because, you know, I'm my soul is taking me on a journey, and that was not the last stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I got to to talk about that in the book too. So, and I didn't talk about it just to talk about. I talked about so people could understand where their beliefs and thoughts can take them. And to ask yourself, because everything you ask yourself, there's an answer inside. So you may go to a group. And you may feel, well, you know, I'm not comfortable with that group. You ask yourself, is this the right place for me? You will be surprised. Mm. You get the answer. Fascinating. Or, or you may be feeling, okay, my God, I'm so touched. I'm, I, I feel it so strongly and so strongly in this group. Mm. you're guided yeah I've had some experiences of all different kinds like you're describing for sure yeah um, but back to my earlier question um, what would you say is your book's central message around how to do the, the deep healing the deep healing is about asking yourself questions or it's about you know you are your spark is is the light beyond all things it's 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 reminding you that what you think you are and and to bring that in you are the that you are the light of awareness you are the light of awareness and so we, we let go the thought of this physical body. Just go into that energy field. You are the light of awareness. Just, and if you close your eyes and just tell yourself just that. Mm -hmm. Just that. I am the light of awareness. And that in itself, just that one simple thing, take yourself away from your thinking because you won't find it there. It's not about a mental trying, okay, I'm going to. And the same place is you can't be at peace with say, I'm going to try for my mind. You know, as Christ said, the ego is important. When you're growing up, there's a way it's important for you to make decisions and use your intellect. But if you get trapped in your ego, that's when you are outside of the divine consciousness. Mm. You're in the human consciousness. And so the, and the divine consciousness to me is the divine spark consciousness. Mm -hmm. Some people might hear what you said said, well, that's the very essence of spiritual bypass. You're ignoring the darkness and it's going into the light. Are you implying that the full identification with the light is in fact a great way to heal the trauma? Because if you're fully identified as light, the, the trauma will literally just dissolve away and not bother you again? No, 
No, because at the beginning of the book, it talks about your 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 traumas, your wounds. It talks about that first. It mm. really addresses that which has corrupted your divine spark and taking it away into this egoic place. Mm -hmm. And and it's vitally important because on my website too, I have another thing that I offer. The, um, chakra, the first three chakras for you to go to and I and I go through all of that with you because the lower part of our body is where we started to be conditioned be programmed and it's sitting right there in those first three chakras primarily that really affect the way in which you feel because fear to me I've always said fear is a guardian at your as at your heart. I have to look at am I afraid? Or what is it I'm afraid of? And we all have some fear. <laughs> we all have some fear. We need to break through that barrier. We need to go because that's what I did as Benjamin for th for thirty odd years. I help people to heal their wounds. Because it's vitally important. And I understood that because of my own experiences, I had to go through my own self-healing. That's yeah. what my guides want, my soul wanted me to do. And it's through my self-healing that I got to understand the depth of human conditioning. Mm. That's why it's, it, I have it on the book, Free Yourself from Human Conditioning is to let go all the trauma, let go everything they told you you're not. Mm -hmm. I remember I was having some, you know, we have some doubts to, to step out. The first time you're going to dive from a, from a, you know, a diving board, you know, there was a little bit of doubt and apprehension. And I was going through a meditation and I happened to see tags you know, when you write tags of black over my body. And I knew those are the things that people said to me when I was growing up. And I and they were still trapped there. So this is the reason why going through your your inner healing is very important. Okay. Don't hide away from the doubt. There are many people who take a side road, they get into addiction, they get into overeating so I can feel better, or they get into other addictive behaviors so they can step away from the pain that they're feeling inside. Mm. And I understand that. It's not the addiction that is the problem. I stop and ask, why am I addicted? What is here that I want to run away from? Because there is a pain in here that I don't know how to get rid of it. I don't know what to do because there's a block and there's a fear about having to go back and enter it into that deep pain. There really are people who can help you through all that with people who have a lot of love and compassion. And have gone down that road too. Because I don't think someone can do that if they only read or went to a traditional therapy school. Mm. You've got, you got to get the hard knocks. And that's where the compassion comes from. Mm. All of our experience is not just about us. It's about us to learn something to to assist other people. That's that's how I see that. And I think, Benjamin, you probably would agree with that. Yeah, I was just thinking as you were saying that, that my, you know, I'm 64 and I've been, been down this road a while as well. Um, and my current belief is that the life only brings us challenge as needed to catalyze our growth. There's no challenge that isn't purposeful in my experience. So I've, my own experience, if I'm being challenged, the greater the challenge, 
the greater the breakthrough that waits when the challenge is successfully mastered. Absolutely. And the thing I was thinking the other day is that, you know, my soul had, I think, pockets of agreements, all of us. My mm. soul had agreements that, and a lot of it had been a long journey about the hard knocks. But through those hard knocks, this is my greatest education into what my soul had agreed to do here. Mm. And now that I got the messages, I look back and I said, this, I understand through all of these experiences. I had to learn and grow and evolve through that. And whatever it is now, Benjamin, you're called to do, it is coming from your own own experiences that you open to go through. Mm -hmm. Yes. And all we have to do, let go of the resistance. Mm -hmm. Somebody is there to hold us. Mm -hmm. And yes. synchronicity will bring them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Well, um, we're just about at our time. I've, I, I just, the whole hour, I've just been basking in your light. So uh, thanks for bringing oh, such a beautiful energy to this. And so, um, so just to clarify one quick point, um, a moment ago, you spoke of you doing healing work in the past tense. Are you no longer taking individual clients? Oh, I do. I still do. Okay. Something came to, I want to say, something came to me some, maybe a month ago or so. I was to do one-on-one -on -one clients on a donation basis. Mm -hmm. And I I went to Douglas, I hugged him and I was sobbing because I could feel I lined up with my soul's agreement exactly more in line when I did that. My whole world, it's, I came out of the box of business, the business world, the traditional mm -hmm. business world. Right. I, I felt myself, I stood out, and now I can be who I want to be mm. without feeling I have to follow the traditional way. And it was such a freedom, Benjamin. Mm. So, yeah, I do. And because I want to help, I want to help people, not because of how much money they have. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. So how would people find you if they wanted to learn more about your book or work with you privately? What sure. Would you... They they go on my website. And on my website, they will see I have a, my book. They open about my book. They'll see all of that. They'll see where to go on Amazon to get it. And, also, and what is the website? What's the name of the website? Oh, yes. It's Radavi. R, you know, R A D A V I E, Radavi.net. It's pretty simple. Okay. With my Radavi. name, Radavi.net. I'll, I'll put that in the and, show notes. Yeah. Yes. And um, and then I have the few things there that I'm offering um, for you, free for you to listen to and see. So, um, and then you get to learn more, a little bit more about me there. Oh, beautiful. Um, I just saw. Uh, I, I just opened this, um, Benjamin. I'm, you know, I'm guided to open this, and I wanted to say something that the divine spot said. Sure. May I just? Of course. He said, "We divine sparks begun to fall asleep, forgetting our spark, as we became saturated in their ways, in the human ways." I just opened and saw this. Mm. Now it's time to awaken. Mm. Now it's time. Amen. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Wow, thank you. Any final thoughts you want to share before we wrap up? There's no one here on this planet who is alone. There's no one here that just doesn't have that love that came in with you when you were born. I happen to know that. And I want to remind you that. Mm -hmm. You are not only feeling love at times. I want to tell you too. You are love. Mm 
Mm. Love is not oh, uh, with a language. It's with an expression. Mm. Nice. I just want to remind, to remind you. Thank you. And unless I misperceive your message, you are it may be easier initially to identify as the divine spark, but really we're all the divine, the whole thing, right? Well, sparks, man. <laughs> <laughs> no <I'm> sparks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking this time with us. And as a reminder, um, again, uh, her book with her partner, Doug DiCarlo, was called The Divine Sparks Speak. Awaken to Inner Peace in the Midst of Chaos, Free Yourself from Human Conditioning. And her website is radavi.net, R-A-D-A-V-I-E.net. All right, beautiful. Thank you, Radavi. It's been a delight. I'm just soaking in your light and blissed out, and uh, I'm glad I was able to speak anyway. Thank you so much, Ben. I know you're my divine friend. Mm. And that's just when I say that. Oh, thank mm. you. I feel the same. All right. Thanks so much for being on Awaken, Heal, and Thrive. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. <laughs> bye. Once again, big thanks to Radhavi for gracing us with her divine presence. Be sure to click the links in the show notes to check out her book and all the great offerings on her website. This episode is co-sponsored by my online membership called Awakening Plus, where you can awaken, heal, and thrive easily, quickly, and affordably. Here's a quote from one of our members. The Awakening Plus events, as well as the invocations on our recordings, really help me shift my energy so that I more easily flow through life. For example, I could feel tired, anxious, or worried. But after listening to an archive recording, where I get help from you and our divine allies, I am grounded and clear. It's a chill pill of sorts. And all I had to do was to be passive. It could not get easier than that. This is essential for my self-care. End quote. Click the link in the show notes to learn more about Awakening Plus or visit awakeningplus.com. That's awakening, P-L-U-S, dot com. Also, I'm delighted that my book, Instant Divine Assistance, just received its 200th rating on Amazon. I'm also grateful that 81% of readers gave it a five-star rating, and its overall rating is 4.6 out of 5. Not only that, more than a year and a half after publication, it still ranks high in its categories. For example, as of May 15th, 2024, the ebook was number five in New Age mysticism and number 10 in spiritual healing. If you're one of those wonderful people who rated or reviewed my book, thank you. And if you haven't read it yet, maybe all this great news will tempt you to check it out. As I mentioned earlier, the 15-word title of my number one bestseller is Instant Divine Assistance your complete guide to fast and easy spiritual awakening, healing, and more. If you'd like to listen, my audiobook is free if you're not yet an Audible member. Instant Divine Assistance is also available as an ebook, paperback, and hardcover. Click a link in the show notes to check it out on Audible or Amazon, or read it in Kindle Unlimited. Thanks for being here. Once again, I'm Benjamin Bernstein, and we are wrapping up. Please leave me a five-star rating, review, or comment wherever you're getting this episode so others can also awaken, heal, and thrive. And be sure to click the link in the show notes for a chance to win one free year of my Awakening Plus online membership. Thanks again for spending this time with me. I wish you infinite blessings. <laughs>